Go, 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 fight fans. To the Fighters Boys Kick Ass Podcast. Your Fight Talk Authority. Not to mention the most entertaining and talked about podcast with your kick ass host, Richard Ortiz. You mad? Come at me, bro. And his loyal kick ass co host, Senor Cole Escovito. Streaming live and worldwide. Coming to you all the way live from a little place somewhere in Cali. The Fighters Boys Kick Ass Podcast. What's going on? What's up, guys? We were going to have a guest on today. We've been having technical difficulties. I got a delay going on. I got a repeat. Get rid of that. Um, we were going to have Stephanie Frosto on today to talk about her most recent signing to be louder. There we go. To be on the UFC Contender Show series coming up in September on the 29th. But technology hates me, apparently. So. Technology wants to be a pain in the ass and doesn't want to work with us today. So we're going to have to reschedule uh, Stephanie, and we'll have her on as soon as we can get a segment. And even if it's not next week, we'll, we'll get on before she goes on to the Contender. But right now, she is going to be competing on the Contender Series. Um, if you guys have noticed, they've been racking out just week after week of the Contender Series, and they just dropped all of it on, and people were able to watch and take care of it and stuff. So, And a lot of stuff came out of that. It's... Um, it's weird because they've been talking about how they they have these over uh like rosters and so dana white made this statement after the contender series came and he said hey you know we're going to be doing some cuts um because we've got too many guys like we've got too many guys to have right now the rosters are full which i'm not sure i technically agree with that i can agree with it in the sense of they might say they have full rosters with guys they can't really use i guess you know maybe guys that they're just not They've been on some lost streaks. They're not very active. They're not social media friendly. They're not active here. They're not active there. They're not seeing their fans. They're not doing seminars. Like all this other stuff that they're probably hoping meets the criteria of do this so we can like sell you, brand you, market you. Like we can we can pitch you to the public at this point. But that's where the contender series is in Dana's mind is he wants to be building a, uh, like a consistent cycle crop of fighters. Like all the new guys are just going to go through the contender series. Like you fight once or twice do a good job you could probably get your way in so it's a good it's a great platform for those that are trying to get exposure as well as those that already have exposure like for uh, for example people like stephanie frausto she's already got exposure what she's lacking is the opportunity to display that that ability on a platform on a consistent basis on a basis that's properly uh displayed in a manner that you know she feels reflects the effort that she's been putting forward training camps uh promotion brand marketing self-marketing all that stuff so i can imagine you know when the opportunity came across she was like fuck yeah i'm gonna jump on it so we were hoping to have her on today guys to talk about that and uh get her feeling her sense her sense of that but uh like i said technology fucking hates me apparently so and it doesn't want to work with us so it's gonna we're gonna reschedule it like i said if we have to do a call in with stephanie at another time later today or tomorrow or something what we'll do is we'll just pull that video and we'll just we'll post it up so that's why you need to subscribe guys you need to subscribe because if you don't you're not going to get that little ding on your phone it's going to tell you hey you know the stephanie frosto in you know frosto video drop you know the contender series here job so we can talk about that and then we can drop that on the channel for you guys at a later time uh, since we can't provide it to you today, which is what we were shooting for. But like I said, technology is a bitch. I don't know. It's a double-edged sword. According to KP, uh, my, my fucking Jeremy over there, KP the Jeremy man, he uh, feels that it's a double-edged sword. I don't. But then again, without technology, you wouldn't be listening to me babble like an idiot anyway. So... Um, but yeah, so we'll get that interview with her and we'll get that up on the website. So on the, on the YouTube channel. So if you don't subscribe or you're already subscribed, you know, you don't, or you already are, I got, I got answers for both of that. One, why not? Why not? Two, if you are good, thank you. We love you. You're awesome. Thanks for doing that. But help us out. Tell your friend, tell two friends, tell four friends. I don't care. Tell all of them. Share. Get them to subscribe. We want to get that subscription level up to a certain stage, guys. We've got levels and stages of things we're trying to do. We've got we've got a project that's in the works that we want to be part of. There's a there's a market out there for some stuff that we want to be involved in, and that's how we do it. And we got to build that subscribers numbers. We got to get that up there. That's that is like YouTube uh, currency for like YouTube people. Like I like know like very little about YouTube, but I know that like. The more subscribers you have, the better. That's my archaic knowledge as far as YouTube guys uh, goes on that one, guys. So just take it for what, what it is. But 
we'll post that video with Stephanie talking about the Contender Series signing, how it happened, you know, think new things. You know, we've, we've talked to her about how she got in the fight and all that stuff. We're going to talk about some new stuff. We're going to talk about some new shit. Get it out there. Let her know. Let her talk to her fans. Let them know that she's made this big jump. Like, she's made a big jump in her career right now. She has got herself in the door of where she wants to go, you know? And I, I think every... I think any MMA fighter would be lying to you if they said that when they got into MMA, their goal was not a UFC championship. I mean, if you if you rebut that with, I'm just getting in it for money, I don't care how many belts I get or whatever, okay, cool, I can respect that and get behind that too. Make your money, do it. But I think everybody, I think a large portion of them get into it wanting to achieve. Like one day it's like, dude, everyone thinks it's a dream, some people think it's a fantasy, others make it a reality. I mean, there's different varying levels to that kind of stuff. So. She's now gotten her foot in the door. She's in a position she wants to be, which I feel is is a belt holder in the women's division for the UFC. I mean, reality is anything can say is, oh, that's everyone's job. Well, one that hurt. You know, Stephanie's an accomplished fighter. So, like I said, guys, we will be getting that interview with her when uh, the internet gods want to play nice again, apparently. And then we'll post that up. But you're not going to know when we post that up if you don't subscribe. So make sure you subscribe to it, guys. Hit the notification button so you can get that link in. It'll tell you, bing, it'll tell you when we post that up. We'll try to get that up in the next couple days for you guys. Uh, Derek Lewis, the Black Beast. No, that's not the guy. That's N N Nagano is the guy I'm talking about. That's the one that's got the. See, we're we're jumping ahead of ourselves, KP. God damn it. <laughs> we are we are jumping ahead, guys. We're spoiling our own show over here. Um, it's like when you watch like four episodes ahead on a show and you like start talking about it in front of somebody who hasn't watched yet and you're like, oh man, this, oh man, that. And I'm fucking guilty as shit of that, by the way, guys. I will, I will ruin a show. Don't talk to me about a show that we've, that's got binge, binge ability to it unless you've watched it. Don't do it. This is like your fucking disclaimer right now. Like, unless you've watched all of it already and you want to discuss it, don't, don't, don't. Not because I don't want to talk to you about it. I would love to talk to you about it, but I'll spoil the shit out of it for you because I just want to talk about all of it. Like, and just talk about the show. I don't want to just talk about like one episode. Oh yeah, that episode was pretty cool, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but what about the rest of the character after that? Like, I want to talk about the whole, the, sh the show as a whole. So, like, I've got friends that have watched Umbrella Academy season one. They haven't watched season two yet. If you haven't watched Umbrella Academy, do yourself a favor. It's a good show. I like it. Um, it's a little violent. It's a little on the mature side. I would, you know, I'm not telling you who to let watch it or what age or whatever. But um, I think it's got a little bit of the teen and up range. So, anyway, you got to you gotta do that. And... Um, I don't want to jump ahead, so I'm a spoiler, so don't talk to me about the show. So we're jumping ahead in our show anyway. But anyway, we're trying to find out who is uh, next up with uh, Miyakik, and it's, it's Nagano, and I was trying to figure out how to pronounce the name without butchering it like an idiot. So, But anyway, so guys, subscribe, the notification button like we said, but tell your friends we need, we need them to subscribe and notification bell as well. So help us out on that, and then I'll stop beating that dead horse on that one, guys. So, But with that said, September 29th, just for those who are curious, that is when Steph will be doing her UFC contender series fight and we'll get more on that as the days goes on here guys so um speaking of dumb shit I was talking about this earlier dude my cousin sent me this stuff dude someone stole Justin Gaethje's bike like who does that like yeah dude this guy just stole a bike from my garage in Denver Lakewood Colorado if anybody knows a private investigator around the Denver area I'd be happy to hire him first off that's a badass bike Justin that's a fucking bike. That's the kind of shit my boy Justin uh, Ramirez read. That he's the kind of guy that would take a bike like that. Like, look at the fucking tires on that thing, dude. That's like that's like a truck. It's like a truck on two wheels. Um, but how stupid do you have to be to steal Justin Gage UFC fighter Justin Gaethje's bike? Like, I mean, okay, maybe not that stupid. Maybe you didn't know it was Justin Gaethje's bike. Because I imagine if 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 he knew he was stealing Justin's bike, like. I've heard of crazy shit before, but that's just suicidal. Mm -hmm. That's a badass bike, dude. Any bike that says Maxxis and Rambo on it, that's a man's bike. So um, if you guys live in the Denver area and you see Rambo rolling around there with some dude with a red shirt on apparently, because that happened today, mind you. So if you're in the Denver Lakewood area, that shit happened today. Like you'll probably find Justin's bike parked in like an alleyway by now somewhere just chilling just leaned up against the wall like somebody pointed out and was like hey dude you know that's that UFC guy's bike and they'll be like oh shit 
I did that. Um, I did that shit one time. I went all PI. I had uh, all my gear from my UFC fights and the gloves that they let you keep and stuff, which they're super cool, by the way, about doing that. They they let you keep them. I fought for some promotions that, hey, they don't let you keep them because they need them. I understand that. But like some big promotions who I won't I won't name, but I fought for some that they they want to they want you to pay for the gloves. I mean, I get it. A promotion costs money and, and things like that, but it's like, come, you're just like, you're like penny pinching at that point. Like, you're just being weird about it. Like, you're being weird. Like, don't. Like, we. I fought in those. Just let me keep them. Like, come on. Like, why not? Like, it's not hurting you. I understand promotions cost money. And we'll get buy more gloves. Okay, well, maybe have one less fight on your card. You'd probably free up a couple grand fucked hard. So anyway, that's my stance on that. You should let fighters keep the gloves at some point. At some level of organization, you should start letting the fighters keep the gloves. Because those all fights matter in their career to them. But there's a certain point where those fights start to really matter because that becomes a, de- a career a career defining uh, jump in their career that where they want to start, you know, rectifying that or more memorializing that or remembering or whatever you want to call it. So that is what it is. And even though I ramble on it. So if you're in the Denver area, guys, help Justin out. Find his bike. I want to find out. I want to find out this fox who stole his bike, dude, and was just like, yeah, let's do that. Why not? So uh, but like uh, my boy over here. KP, spoiler, spoiler, we, uh, it's, it's Naganu, I'm hoping, please, God, because the man could kill me, okay? I'm not going to lie. Like, we, like, I could probably take most average citizens, but like when you get into the realm of fighting, like that dude's just a serial killer. Like anybody below his weight class, pick you up like a child and fucking fling you across the room. So let that be a lesson to me. Um, but he is next in line uh, once once Stipe's you know good to go and and is ready to take on the next fight and wants to start the next camp. He is the man that is uh, you know Francis is going to be the next man that's in line. So Dana White already said we've we've promised it and we've all heard Dana White before say well we promised it to him and that but you, shit happens stuff changes. Um, we saw John Jones give up his light heavyweight belt. You know, he gave that up. And I mean, I had a couple friends that were hitting me up. They're like, oh, hey, I saw Jones gave up his belt. You know, is he retiring? And I'm like, nah, probably not. I'm like, he'll probably go to heavyweight. And like, not even like the next day. Because he was talking about contracts, uh, dis- not contract dispute, but they couldn't come to a favorable agreement for him, which basically just meant, you know, it could mean nothing. Honestly, at the end of the day, if you want to put your tinfoil hat on and listen for a second, hear me out. Um, it, it, this is something that they discussed as a strategy move anyway. There was no big, oh, you know, of course he's going to have to give up his belt. Let's remember that. People are acting like he gave it up and he was going to retire. But no, it's like realistically he wants to move up, you know, weight class. So they're like, dude, let's just, you can announce your retirement, uh, not really announce your retirement, but just say you're leaving the UFC because you couldn't reach a favorable negotiation contract. You know, you'll go wherever you want to go or people will think you're going to go wherever you want to go. And then what we'll do is we'll just, the next day, we'll just announce that we were able to come to some kind of an agreement. I mean, it's like, it just happens. There was, there was no like gap or window or anything in between the two of those. It was just like, boom, I'm giving up the belt. Um, I wish the UFC the best of luck. We couldn't come to an agreement. Uh, maybe one day they'll think, you know, and sit down. So I don't really think it was a matter of they sat down and thought about it for a while because there was, a while hadn't even passed. So... I would say it was more of a, a strategy move on all parties involved. Like they all knew this was the route they were going to go. They were like, look, just give up the light heavyweight. There's no point in, in, in trying. Because at that weight class, man, the, the light heavyweight and the heavy, like to fluctuate back and forth like that to, to I mean, especially for a guy like Jones. I mean, he's got like, what, is it two brothers? I know he's got one for sure that's a football player. He's like a pro football player. And he's a big dude, he's like a lineman or something or a defensive end or something. He's a big fucking dude. Him and his brothers are all big dudes. So John's, is like, John's like the small guy right now because he's maintaining a, a weight like ceiling for, for fighting because he doesn't want to get too heavy because he's got to be able to cut properly without hurting himself. So the move to heavy was probably something that he was like, okay, why not? Because at the end of the day, you know, being the light heavyweight champion, that's pretty cool and all. And he, he'll go down as probably arguably, at least in the argument of, you know, goats. And there's just nothing to get around it. Whether you like the guy or hate the guy, the bottom line is the guy wins fights against unarguably some of the toughest competition on the planet or on a regular basis. So I think he's looked human his last two fights though. I mean, I think, um, 
the last what the hell was it was it what was the last guy name of the guy that just fought him last time uh dominic reyes dominic reyes made him look human as shit and arguably beat him but again like i said you you have to de totally destroy the champ it's a weird archaic way of looking at fights and I, i'm not saying i agree with it i'm just saying that's the fucking way it is like the sky is blue complain to your congressman you know so uh, you can't do anything about stuff like that that's just the way it is you want to make change start a start a petition start a legislative petition about changing the ruling cycle for you know the mma criteria is is the 10 point system archaic is the method of process that if you're the champ you automatically have like these invisible points to your advantage i mean should you you know i mean a lot of people would say well you you have these points you shouldn't have these points well you you did everything you needed to do to get to that point of champion why shouldn't you have a little bit of clout as far as your advantage in the ring now people say well because every fight's a new fight agreed agreed but you're the champ they're the challenger if you want to say i would use this argument and probably the only argument i can really use to defend uh the thought process behind why the champion should be have a little, little more lenience in the fight as far as the decision goes. If you're the champion, you don't get the shit kicked out of you. You kind of edge, you edge out. You have an advantage. Let my jujitsu guys, you fucking get it. Oh. My jujitsu guys, you'll get it. You get a fucking advantage because like you tried to pass guard like one more time than I did or something. Like you just were a little bit aggressive, and so like you get the advantage point. So we each have four fucking points. Okay, my boys, Tom, Angel. Mike, Martinez, fucking so to all you guys, all my jiu-jitsu guys, Dan, Dave, Camarillo, you guys will get it. Like, you, that's annoying as fuck. But that's the same thing. Champion gets that advantage. That little, if it's just like a half point to turn it into a split decision, it's going to go in the, the fucking favor of the champion. So my argument to it would be this. If the champion gets to come out second, and that's a mandatory protocol, why is that mandatory protocol? you say for entertainment purposes sure okay great what's the matter both guys got to come out right if the champion wants to come out first why can't he come out first they make the champion come out second always they make the opponent wait the challenger always has to wait i used to know uh jennifer alcorn even when she, <laughs> this chick man fuck it jen you're the best you guys you and brad were fucking awesome you always be family um she used to have it like in her contract almost that like no matter what whether she was champion at the time or not she got to come out second it was a psychological thing that she fucking took a line on at one point in her career she started drawing that line of sand and said no i'm jennifer fucking alcorn they're gonna wait for me i don't care that's just the way it is and they and the promoters went with it because she was fucking putting asses in seats and beating bitches up so pfft, you say no to that you'd be stupid Ask fucking print up what it was like back then. Chris, Christian, he'll know. He'll tell you. Fuck shit was Wild West back then, man. Fucking stab a knife in the contract. I say you signed that shit. So Dominic Reyes made him look human. Uh, Santo, uh, Santiago, uh, Santos, uh, Santos made him look uh, super, super, super regular human in my eyes because he blew his knee out in that first round. And then still drug that fight out to a decision. Now some will say, "Well, Jones draw Jones fucking downshifted because the dude clearly had a blowing out knee, and you could tell." So Jones downshifted, and I can see the argument for that, but I could also just see no. Jones just kept fighting the fight, and just you had a wounded fucking tiger at that point. Like Santos was a wounded animal at that point, dangerous as shit because he knew that it was basically on your shield time. That was it. His, his, he was at such a disadvantage at that point that you had no choice but to go crazy. So he became very dangerous for those five rounds. So I think Jones might have downshifted, but he downshifted not because he was looking to take it easy on Santos. He was doing it because it was a smart thing to do because fighting a guy that's a dangerous tiger like that who doesn't care, he, his knee's already fucking destroyed right now, trying to go and kill you on it, it's not going to do any worse damage. It's already done. He's going to have to have surgery on it. So he's dangerous. He now has nothing to lose. He's a, he's a wounded animal. You know, if you shot a tiger and it was dying, it's going to try to it's going to try to kill you as fast and as violent as it can before it dies. It already knows I'm fucking I'm dying. It doesn't matter. That's a lethal shot. So, you're coming with me. Kind of concept. And that's what Santos did. And that made Jones look real regular, you know, like a regular guy. And I'm not saying that's anything. I just think that what that does is Jones goes fucking super saiyan and he like 
comes back better than ever every time. That's why with the I always use the Gustafson fight as an example. Like him, that was a real close fight. The first one, they beat the dog shit out of each other. But then, when you look back on their second fight, Jones was just just a step ahead of him on everything. And now you say, well, because he learned from that fight. Well, Jones just became a better fighter. Like that was always the best we were going to see, Alex. Jones just got better and you know keeps getting better but I think he kind of had a wall with like guys like Reyes and, and Santos and had to like rethink some things so some can say he's running some can say he runs from Israel I don't I don't think he's running from Israel I mean there's more money to be made at the heavyweight thing anyway which, which brings me back to the original point of yeah being like heavyweight champ is great and all but heavyweight champ is usually considered the baddest motherfucker on the planet I don't care who you are because in that sport of killers, and that's what it is, you're the you're the biggest guy in that world. Like, yeah, a light heavyweight could probably give you a good run for your money, maybe beat you um, if you're maybe just a sub level down par heavy guy. But you get a really good fucking heavyweight against a really good light heavyweight that's fighting you from a light heavyweight. You're gonna beat them. We should nine times out of ten at least. Your 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 skill of like people always say size doesn't matter, and I agree. I agree d- d- to an extent because you got to think about this at the end of the day. Size doesn't matter because what the art was created for, intended for, and the way it is supposed to be used and utilized. And I agree. I'll never disagree with that because to do would be ignorant and blind to the fact of what the art is. It's intended to make the smaller man the dangerous guy, period, against a larger opponent. But when you're said larger opponent has the same skill set as you, the playing field went from you're up here with skill because he's bigger and doesn't have jujitsu. You're way up here. But when you add his now known skill level, okay, if he's as good as you at what you guys both do, his size now matters. You know, And some people say, no, it doesn't matter still. It's you still beat the bigger guy. At the end of the day, man, when you got two killers fighting each other, size is going to fucking matter. It's, I may be wrong, but I'm you're probably not going to be able to convince me. And I'm open to the argument or debate on it on, on, on that thought process of once they get to the same level of skill, that size does matter again. The, the spectrum changes. It adjusts itself accordingly. But it requires so much of one ingredient, which is skill, to change that variable. The skill level brings it up here against the, the bigger opponent. And size catches up. And, oh, I'm just as good as you as it now. Like, I mean, I can beat heavyweights in the gym that are guys that are just learning or new and have very little fighting experience, of course I can beat them. I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to know more than them. I'm supposed to be better at what we're doing. I'm supposed to help them learn by being better than them so they can learn how to be better themselves. That's how it goes. Sharpens iron sharpen kind of thing. So, But once that guy starts to learn a certain level of skill, like he starts to become dangerous now. His size starts to matter. He knows how to punch correctly. He knows how to balance himself. He's not off balance all the time. He's not missing all the time. His hand-eye coordination is approved. His speed's increased. He doesn't have to get bigger any stronger. He's already big and strong like a fucking bear. But his skill set is now caught up to you. Now his footwork's a little better. He's a little faster. He's a little more agile for his size. He starts to become a more dangerous training partner. That's just the way it is. And the goal of anybody who is a true student of the art itself or whatever art they're practicing, whatever discipline they're practicing, the goal really is to make them better. You know, if, a day, if a day ever comes where your instructor gets mad that you've started to become better than them somehow, if you've surpassed your, your instructor, if your instructor gets mad, you're with the wrong instructor to begin with. Sorry to illuminate that to you. But everyone's been saying that for years, so it's nothing new. Your instructor, your teacher, your guide should never get upset when you've surpassed them in knowledge or ability. If you have an instructor, coach, manager manager got mad because you got a big fight without him or something you know that happens i've seen managers get mad so you just gotta remember there's there's nothing wrong with being the best guy in the gym but there's also nothing wrong with not being the best guy in the gym like i don't really know how to change that so like i said that's why jones is probably going up because being the baddest man on the planet is at heavyweight and that's where the belt sits so why not go up and get it and he can he's fully capable so like dana said He'll get the first shot at heavyweight. And I heard people were bitching and moaning, like, why? Why does he get first shot? Well, why not? He gave up his light heavyweight belt. It's not like he's on a losing streak or anything. He's arguably one of the best fighters on the goddamn planet. So he's giving up his belt so that he can move up. And his reasons are good. He feels he'll do better. And he was quoted in saying that 
all my brothers were all just big guys. Like they're just naturally big gentlemen. They're just genetically big dudes. One plays football for a fucking, I think they blow play football for a living actually. And like I said, Jones is like usually considered the smaller of the brothers. So he's like, fuck it. I'm going to put on my, um, some weight and I'm going to use that to my advantage because I'm just, I think my body will perform better at a bigger weight. He'll be able to lift more. He'll be able to hit harder. I think he'll be able to do like a, like Connor, as long as he does like Connor, when Connor came and fought Cerrone at 170, when he came up and weighed, he was moving, he was agile. He had spent time. So if Jones spends this time while we're waiting for Nagano, uh, for Francis and uh, Stipe to fight while we wait for them to fight, Jones needs to be putting on that weight, turning it into muscle or whatever, you know, however they want to carry the weight. And he needs to start learning to move with that weight, hit with that weight. He needs to get fast with that weight. And everything that makes John Jones, John Jones, you know, the movement, the snap kick, the, all that, all of that. He needs to make that work at the heavyweight weight class. So he needs to take time. He needs to take time. That was one of the things that I thought did, was a ditch advantage for Connor when he fought Nate at 170. The first time they fought, he was noticeably, Connor was noticeably bigger, but he didn't, he moved slow. He didn't move as fast. He looked sluggish. You know, he didn't look like he was carrying the weight because he'd probably never carried that weight before. He looked like he got tired a little faster. You know, more muscle, you got to, more muscles, you got to feed him more oxygen. You got to get used to it. So I think Jones should spend that time between now and while they're waiting for that fight to happen, getting used to that weight. This is not me trying to say, oh, like a dumbass with a mustache is trying to tell John Jones how to fucking fight. No, fuck stick. This is not me doing that, guys. I'm just saying from my experience, you know, and my time in the sport, I feel that that is what would be the most best advantage because we saw how that benefited Conor. We've already seen the results. When Conor was going to fight Cerrone at 170, he spent time getting used to that weight. He knew that fight at that weight was coming, so he spent time getting used to that weight that time around. And he looked really fucking good at 170. So... I think Jones wants to succeed the way he wants to succeed at that weight class. He needs to spend this time now because he was saying that he wants to get the fight, but Dana's like, no, you, you don't get to go to front of the line. You get to go to the front of the line with whoever wins this fight. Sure, you can be the next in line, guaranteed first fight you get, it's a title fight. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with a winning, defending champion vacating a belt that he didn't lose to anyone to move to another weight class and is granted first dibs. I have no problem with champion fighting champion. And fucking, I encourage it. I, I encourage it because at the end of the day, why not? Everybody in that weight class will go, whoa, they didn't learn it, they didn't learn it. Motherfucker, they got a belt in the UFC. They've earned plenty. Stop. And on top of that, I'll double down on that shit. It's in your benefit, guys, in the roster at that weight class that bitch about it because here's the thing. If he goes and loses and gets his butt kicked, you can all point and go, see, fuck, told you, you don't belong in heavyweight. Cool, wait your turn. At that point, you can all line up to kick his ass at heavyweight. Like, it's a fucking win-win. If you just sit down and relax and don't get mad, you know, but not this particular scenario. I'm not saying fighters are, but you see fighters will get mad when people jump in and they get first weight. If a guy jumps in and gets first shot at the title, as long as it's warranted, I'm okay with it. Why not? Who wouldn't want to see uh, John Jones fight Francis or Stipe? I, I would want to see that. I don't give a shit who he fights. I'll watch him fight either one of those guys at heavyweight. And for the strap, why not? Like, it's a win-win for everybody. The fans get to see a badass fight. They get to see Johns make his debut at heavyweight. They get to see a title fight. We retain a heavyweight champion because no matter what happens, someone leaves with the belt. It'll be good numbers on pay-per-view. It does everyone's career. Now, Adriel Asanya, not too happy about that. I can understand, you know, because he feels that there was a good opportunity for a, a cross-weight fight there either Jones down or him up. Like they're close enough in weight class that that was a doable thing. That was a possibility. And that's why I think he thinks he's running from him, which at the end of the day, man, nobody runs from anybody in the sport, especially that size of organization. He's going up the heavyweight to, to do his shit. You're welcome to eat some cheeseburgers and, and start hitting the meaty steaks, man, if you want to go and follow him. Like nothing's stopping you. There's nothing that says that you can't do the same thing is, you know, it's, I'm not saying you have to, and I'm not saying I'm right, that he is maybe not chasing away from you or running away from you. Maybe he is. Maybe he thinks that you are that risky of an opponent to be a fight, especially being a champion in your weight class. And at that close of a weight to together, that actually makes you a viable threat. You're just basically a little bit smaller as far as the, the weight class itself version of that champion. Middle welter, light heavy, like welter, light heavy. They're not that far off. It's like what a... Maybe 35 pound difference, maybe, I think. No, because um, middleweight's 180. Welter's 170. 
So it's like a 20, 25 pound difference. Like it's doable. You know, there, there's, there's, it was a doable scenario for that. So, or they meet in the middle somewhere, you know, maybe meet at like 190, 185, something, you know, like there's, there was a doable scenario. So I can see the argument for Israel saying that Jones ran. It's, it was too dangerous of a scenario to stay at the champion because then he has to have a champion versus, excuse me, a champion at that weight classes. So I can understand that. But at the end of the day, man, nothing's stopping you from uh, hitting them protein shakes at GNC and hitting the horse steak like, um, Vitor and or uh, over him <laughs> this is just horse meat yeah right bro it's fucking just horse meat god bless you um th there's nothing stopping you at the end of the day if you really want to chase jones you could chase jones that's all there is to it um so we'll leave that one alone um other stuff coming up guys um like i said the contender series got bolstered that's dropping all kinds of new names dana white said he signed four new contracts alone this last week so if he's signing a minimum of four to five new contracts, we could have like a bolster of like 20, 25 new inductees of rookie fighters into the UFC. And I don't mean rookie like you don't know what you're doing. I mean rookie because you're not. This is it. This is the, the big league. Everything's a rook. This is your rookie year. So um, I don't know. I think you're going to see a lot of cuts. Dana was saying you're going to see like double digit number cuts coming, like 14, 15 kind of kind of cuts. So like every opportunity right now for all these fighters, like they said, right now we need guys who want to fight. They can fight. I mean, you've got a UFC coming up Saturday. You get a UFC fight night uh, in Vegas again. So they're doing a bunch in the island. Then they're going to do a bunch at Apex. Then they're going to go back to the island. Then they're going to go back to Apex. Like, that's it, man. That's how it's going to be for a while. But, dude, we're getting tons of fucking fights out of it. And, you know, I'm usually, uh, like, I, I usually don't like the fact that we get a bunch of fights and stuff like that. I think it saturates the market sometimes and it gets a little, we, we don't get to follow anyone specific. But right now, not everyone's fighting. You know, we're being we're being given sports, we're being given content, we're being given enter entertainment of the highest caliber. It's not like we're watching, you know, some local television promotion or something, you know. But I mean, that'd be awesome to see on TV, to be honest. But it's not going to happen. So, but anyway, we've got that Saturday. We've got a fight night at Apex. It's going to be Edgar and, and Munoz, um, or Munoz. I'm probably fucking butchering your name too. Everyone, all these guys are going to beat me up. It sucks. But uh, Munoz, he recently put a beating on uh, Garbrandt. Um, but his most recent fight uh, was a defeat. It was a law. It was a decision loss back in July of last year. So, like I said, this isn't a title fight or anything. So personally, to me, none of that shit matters. You know, I'm a big proponent of saying losing losing streak fighters should not get title fights. That I don't agree with. I don't fuck you. Fuck your entertainment concept. I know it's TV, I know and shit like that, but I don't give a fuck. I think fans would be more benefited and you would see a higher following and a bigger entertainment number return if you just ran with your fucking rankings. Any of you. Like, run with your rankings. It's that simple. Like, to, to say that it matters and entertainment value more, I get it, I fucking get it, I've been there. Entertainment matters. It's the whole purpose and the concept of the business is run on the entertainment concept of making people watch. But if you put on fights that are in an actual contender's line order, your fans can now follow 14 all the fucking way up to contender spot number one. That's what you want. It's, it's literally what you want. That's why you created this fucking contender series. It's what you want. You want me to watch this dude on your week six of the contender series and follow that motherfucker all the way up to the title. You're going to make a lifelong fighter a brand and you're going to make a lifelong fan by getting that going. So why not have your contender series that's feeding new fighters constantly into your organization? Why not have an actual fucking realistic ranking system? It's not just UFC either. It's, it's organizations in general and fucking today's market had their, they've just, why even have rankings? You guys don't even follow them. Why have them? It's pointless. It's, it's fucking pointless. If you're not going to follow him, it's pointless. Don't, don't even bother ranking people. Just be like, yeah, he's, he's in the light, light heavyweight class. He's in the bantamweights. What's his rank? It doesn't matter. We just, whenever, we just have to fight each other like fucking chickens. It's crazy. No, dude. Make a rank system and stick to it. Your contender series is like the perfect reset for that. It's all fucked up right now. Use COVID, use the lack of continued, continually usable fighters and stuff, and just get this new market of guys in there at ground zero and build your fan base on them. Give your, give your guys household name chances here. Don't just put it all on their shoulders. 
Give them, give them a chance with the promotion itself being the big fucking promotion beast that they claim they are, and they are, and they honestly are. I'm not going to argue that. But l use it a little bit for their benefit too, not just add them as a product. Like help them out. Get that fan base in there to follow them with the Contender Series and then run them through a legitimate ranking system. Let your fans follow them. Oh, dude, I like number 14. Well, I like number 9, dude. And number 9's been, he was 14 three months ago. Let, like, do it in, like, waves, like, blocks. Like, every five-block group of fighters. Like, you've got the top 20 through fucking 16, okay? Those five can fight each other. The winners move up in rank. You know, it doesn't matter what order they fight each other in. Then the next block of five, that's your, that's your move-up rank. Then the next block. So, like, if you're in, like, 16th rank, you got to beat number 15. And then once you beat 15, you can, in theory, you can contest 11 or, or 10, whatever. You could, you could challenge them. And you would have the right. But 19 couldn't challenge 12 because there's no fucking point. That's like a seven jump. That's a seven rank jump. Why? Why? Fucking humor me. Any organization, humor me. Tell me it doesn't work. Why, why not? Tell me it doesn't work and why. Well, you get boring fights. Well, then you cut those motherfuckers. Put on boring fights, you get the boot. Like, I want, I want someone to come to me and tell me what is really wrong with having a ranking system. Remember, other organizations, boxing and stuff, they've done it, but then they just let it go. Fucking wild. Nobody follows it. You got to follow a ranking system. And you don't get ranked until you get to the big boy stage. Contender series being... You know that. And if you get inducted in outside of the contender series, cool. Then you get ranked according based on your fight experience versus the guys that are in the you know existing roster and their fight experience. Well, I've got the same experience as number 20. Well, yeah, yeah I might have fought tougher guys than him. Well, so fucking what? So it puts you in an advantage then. I don't want to be at 20. I'm better. I should be in like the top 10. Well, then go fucking knock someone out and show everyone why. Get a fucking paycheck while you're at it, dumbass. Like, the fuck? Fighters agreeing to an active roster system like this that actually uses a ranking system that's accurate and followed, dude, you're doing yourselves a favor. You're giving yourself consistent argument for another fight. Instead of just waiting around and calling each other out, it's like, dude, I'm ranked number 10. I want to fight number seven. Well, cool. We can make that happen. Now, eight and nine, they get a chance to, to, to contest it. You know what I mean? They can say, no, if he's 10 and he wants to fight, I'm 9. He's got to fight me first. Well, there you go. I don't want to fight him. There's nothing into it. Yeah, there is. There's a move up in rank, and a move up in rank means a move up in pay. And you get a paycheck at the same time. It's fucking two birds with one stone. What's wrong with you guys? Anyway, so that's UFC Fight Night coming up this weekend. Munoz, he has beat Garbrandt, but like I said, he did just lose last July. Edgar, he's on a two-fight losing streak himself. So it's going to be one of those spots where I think um, – this might hell. This might be one of those things where if the loser goes home, kind of thing, you know. I don't know what Edgar's contract uh, problems are right now, and then what the negativities of that could be. But again, y'all ain't got a ranking system, so fucking it doesn't matter anyway. Um, but remember, guys, as far as things coming up, UFC Fight Night this Saturday, Apex Center, Las Vegas. Munoz and Edgar headlining that one. Okay, so check that one out, guys. I think Saint, uh, yeah, Saint Saint Peru is going to be on that one as well. I'll give a better rundown this week. But remember, guys, we're going to try to get the Frausto interview going. We're going to do that. We're going to try to post that up on our YouTube channel. So if you're seeing this, share it. Tell your friends. Hit the YouTube like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button. I know I'm asking for a lot, but it's a lot of click, click, clicks. I know you're shopping online. I'm looking at you. Don't lie. I know you're shopping online. Don't try and act like you're not. You know you are. You know you bought some shoes yesterday online. Don't act like you didn't. We both know. So click it, link it, like it. Tell your friends to do the same, guys. I want to break that thousand mark, okay? So help us do that, guys. Remember, guys, Cole Escovito, jackass with the mustache. This is the fighter's voice. Every fighter has a voice, and so do you. Thumbs up for Rich, guys. Thanks for watching.